from gladiator battles to advanced warfare 2 here are 10 cancelled call of duty games with the first being advanced warfare 2 now until 2023 the rumors of a sequel to advanced warfare had circulated online for nearly 10 years but in that year an interview with the previous creative director at sledgehammer games cleared the air by confirming that an advanced warfare 2 was in the works at one point and it even had several prototypes and a playable demo created for this sequel to advanced warfare but ultimately it came down to an executive decision that the studio moved to work onto Call of Duty World War II instead. The creative director said in an interview that many developers were also interested in returning to that World War II setting and they ultimately chose to abandon the sequel to Advanced Warfare. Now a big management philosophy that the studio behind these games had at the time was that it was crucial that a team shows passion for the work of three years or more building the next Call of Duty and after a fair bit of voting and arm twisting the team decided to go with World War II over Advanced Warfare. Basing their decision on over if they wanted to do a sequel or did they want to return to the roots of the franchise and they chose the latter but the former creative director said this if they were to return to advanced warfare 2 they probably wouldn't have cast spacey ouch one of the most interesting cancelled call of duty games of all time is one set in ancient rome and this story takes us all the way back to 2008 who vicarious visions a studio activision bought in 2005 is currently working on a franchise called skylanders but we're secretly also working on a call of duty game that would have blown our minds and this game was called call of duty roman wars which was going to follow julius caesar's 10th legion and in this game you would have ridden horses elephants and even used catapults the studio created a prototype level based on the battle of elysia and it wasn't until 2016 where games radar unearthed unseen footage in which the player is in the third person perspective and you would have been able to switch between first and third the first person view similar to 2005's condemned criminal origins and the third person was very gears of war style an anonymous source told games radar that you would play as several different characters from a lowly grunt to julius caesar himself and it would have strived towards accuracy with its battles keeping close to caesar's real life conquests this demo footage not only impressed activision but it was even seen by its ceo bobby kotick at the time but a mixture of studio stubbornness and fears of oversaturating the brand stopped Call of Duty Roman Wars in its tracks. Oddly enough, the game was also pitched to Ubisoft and you can see company flags within the gameplay footage. And even though this game didn't see the light of day, in 2013, a Roman action game called Rise released as a launch title for the Xbox One, showing that there was interest within the gaming industry for an ancient Rome type game. But one of the most shocking cancelled Call of Duty games was only discovered this year. The discovery and leaked gameplay of Call of Duty Future Warfare, codenamed N X1, which was in development in 2011, which was developed solely by the studio Neversoft, who at the time were the developers on the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series and Guitar Hero. And after the implosion of Infinity Ward with several founders and devs splitting to form Respawn Entertainment, Neversoft pivoted from Guitar Hero to make a futuristic Call of Duty game. But thanks to one of the project leads, Brian Bright, who's also the director for IW Zombies, Extinction, Guitar Hero, and Tony Hawk, we know so much more about this game. Context on the campaign mission, this mission was taking place on the moon and it allowed them to have some experiments with low gravity, but it was really about the team learning how to build Call of Duty on this engine. As prior to this, they were making Guitar Hero games on their Tony Hawk engine. Looking at the time period, this build of the game was a month after the launch of Modern Warfare 3 and a full year before the release of Black Ops 2. With that in mind, this game would have been in place of Call of Duty Ghosts. Brian Bright going on to say that there were two to three campaign missions completely finished and a bunch of multiplayer work done. Now to anyone that has played Call of Duty Ghost, you will see some familiarities from this campaign mission to what we see in the Call of Duty Ghosts campaign. Firstly, the whole premise of the mission that we're seeing here from Future Warfare is very similar to one of the sections of the first mission from Call of Duty Ghosts, where you're moving through a satellite in space whilst it's being hijacked. And that is a very similar thing that we're seeing happen in this campaign demo. Furthermore, the name of the player's character is Walker, which is the same name as the ghost protagonist. So it's extremely likely that what we're seeing here was repurposed for Call of Duty Ghosts, as well as Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, where the game would have been a balance between being boots on the ground as well as futuristic movement. And considering this was all in 2011 before there was even an era of futuristic movement Call of Duty games like Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, it is amazing to see that this could have been the Call of Duty 
Duty game we got in 2013 instead of Ghosts. The single player is only half of the story because we have multiplayer gameplay as well. According to Brian Bright, this multiplayer map was called Sandstorm. Straight away from the gameplay, you can see that this is some sort of hybrid between MW2 and MW3. The Akimbo G11s at the start as well as the HUD. But what's interesting is the main primary weapon is called a Pulse Rifle. Just a futuristic energy weapon that we've never seen before. You see it shot a few times as well as another weapon on the ground called an ECR. But it just looks so alien to see these futuristic weapons in what looks like a modern warfare map from that era. And we know more about this multiplayer from Brian Bright as he was the multiplayer lead on this game. And one thing that he really liked in multiplayer was the first escort game mode in multiplayer. We didn't see an escort game mode until Black Ops 3 in 2015. Several years prior, Neversoft were working on a full escort mode, which the team sound like they were very proud of. Another multiplayer map existed called Galleria, which apparently had the best escort gameplay with a UGV dropping in and the elevator in the map to raise it up a level. As for the design of this specific map, at the time, the team didn't have much of an art team on multiplayer, so the level designers used mainly MW2 assets. But I want to know if you would have wanted this game to release instead of Call of Duty Ghosts. And if this game wasn't exciting enough, we still have seven more to talk about. So if by the end of this video, you've learned something new, let me know if you enjoyed it by clicking that thumbs up for more videos like this. But our next cancelled Call of Duty game takes us to 2011 for a game called Call of Duty Vietnam. Internally, it was called Fog of War, and this was a game under development by Sledgehammer Games, the creators of Advanced Warfare and World War II. All that exists is concept artwork for the game, but it was planned to be an action adventure game that would have been set entirely in third person, with a developer on the project describing it as an uncharted meets Call of Duty. The game spent eight months in development and it even had a 15 minute playable demo. And at the time, they were really getting into the story with a big moment that they'd love to get into a game someday, but it's not something that they could do in first person. And despite the name Vietnam, it was also set in Cambodia and Laos as well, where they did a lot of research on the war, where they were definitely going for some dead space moments. It was going to be a fresh take on war, that's for sure. But ultimately, it got put on hold as Activision offered Sledgehammer the opportunity to help development of the soon-to-release 2011 Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Once Sledgehammer began development on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, it was confirmed in 2014 that Call of Duty Vietnam had seized all development. The studio head at the time said that if they were ever asked to make a third-person game again, they would continue development on Call of Duty Vietnam. One of the most shocking recent cancelled Call of Duty games was a standalone Call of Duty Zombies live service game. Raven Software, the studio behind Call of Duty Warzone and supporting development on many other games were at one time working on a standalone live version of Call of Duty Zombies, but it was cancelled after Treyarch wanted it back. The only known details come from the ex-lead designer who explained he was lead designer on an ambitious new Call of Duty Zombies live service project between 2011 and 2012. Now, the idea of a standalone Zombies game was always the dream Zombies game for fans, but if this did release, then we would have gotten this standalone game instead of Black Ops 2 Zombies, which is a really scary prospect when you think about it. Since the cancellation of this project, Raven Software have gone on to create Exo Zombies inside of Advanced Warfare, and if that is the sort of Zombies that we were going to be getting in this standalone, then maybe it was a good thing that this project got cancelled. I personally think the idea of this game is truly incredible, but when you think about the fact that it wasn't Treyarch that was creating it, then I can't put full faith in this realization being the game that we've always wanted. It would have likely continuously had new round-based maps and weapons added and new modes, but live service games were not a thing back in 2012, so this would have been incredibly ambitious if they pulled it off. The closest thing we currently have to a live service zombies game is Modern Warfare Zombies. Let me know if you would have liked to have seen a standalone in the comments below. Another cancelled Call of Duty game was one called Call of Duty Tactics. This was being developed by Vicarious Visions, who were also responsible for the cancelled Roman Wars game. But rather than your traditional Call of Duty game, this would have been a strategy game. The only gameplay to exist is a 40 second clip of a prototype that was put on by an animator's online portfolio. But straight away from the gameplay style of the game, it would have been so different to anything we've seen before in Call of Duty. But I'm not sure what the reception of this Call of Duty game would have been. The game apparently didn't make it far into development, but the exact reason for its cancellation remains a mystery. The closest thing we've had to a strategy game in Call of Duty is a 
mode in the Black Ops 2 campaign called Strike Force, where instead of playing and controlling a main character, you play as a squad composed of soldiers, drones, and mechs, and the idea was you're jumping through different elements of the squad, taking control of them in order to complete the objectives laid out in a big sandbox level. It wasn't very popular, and we've never seen it return in a campaign since. A one-cut Call of Duty game that would have ignited the entire gaming community was Modern Warfare 2 Multiplayer Remastered. During the first half of 2020, Activision randomly dropped Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, and the mere prospect of an MW2 remaster was something that every gamer had dreamt about. But when it turned out to be just a campaign remaster, a lot of people asked, where is the multiplayer mode? Well, calling to renowned leaker Tom Henderson, he confirmed that Modern Warfare 2 Remastered multiplayer was in development, and the reason why it was cut from actually happening is because they didn't want the release of the multiplayer to overshadow the current game at the time, which was Modern Warfare 2019. Which makes a lot of sense. They didn't want the player base to be split between playing the remastered multiplayer of MW2 over the still current rebranded Modern Warfare. This report from Tom Henderson originated at the beginning of 2022, where he claimed that a lot of the assets that were created for the remastered multiplayer would be coming over to Modern Warfare 2 2022. And whilst that might have been the plan, it's now obvious that instead, all of those assets were moved to Modern Warfare 3 2023, as all the launch maps in that game are remastered MW2 maps. And because of that, I don't think we will ever see a original MW2 multiplayer remaster. But that's not the only Modern Warfare game that won't see the light of day, as Modern Warfare 3 Remastered has been an online rumor for many years. And it only makes sense that if the first and second Modern Warfare's got a remaster, then surely the third one would too. Near the end of 2021, Activision came out with a bold and random statement claiming to Charlie Intel that rumors of a Modern Warfare 3 remaster are false, and that a remaster of Modern Warfare 3 campaign or multiplayer does not exist. And in 2022, renowned COD leaker The Ghost of Hope tweeted that according to a source, the campaign remaster isn't cancelled like previously reported, it is complete and is just sitting there waiting for the right time to be released. On top of that, there's been other rumors for multiple years that PlayStation had a contract with Activision to create a whole trilogy of Modern Warfare remasters that would first launch on PlayStation consoles. This rumored contract involved Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3. Now, to this day, that PlayStation contract is hearsay as there's no proof of its existence. But in the past, Activision has previously denied rumors of previous remasters like MW2 remastered from existing, only to drop them at a later date. So whilst its existence in 2021 might have been true, things might have changed since then. But it's unclear whether a Modern Warfare 3 remaster exists until it's officially confirmed by Activision. Now, we all know that the original Modern Warfare took Call of Duty by storm, but five months before the release of that game, a small team of developers were beginning work on a top secret third person Call of Duty spin-off known as Call of Duty Devil's Brigade. This was going to be set in Italy during World War II, and it would feature squad-based mechanics, exploration, and a grim story about a team of skillfully trained killing machines. From early in development, it had everything going for it. It had Activision's financial support, it had top talent, and most importantly, Infinity Ward were happy for this game to be created. But nine months into development in March 2008, the game was cancelled. The low quality gameplay you're seeing is the only existing footage of this game, where the D-pad was used to direct orders to the squad. That being Assault, Barrage, Hold the Line, and Form Up. A few development screenshots have also been discovered for the game where some weapons from both Call of Duty 2 and Call of Duty 4 were present, being the AK-47 and the Thompson, along with the MP-40, which was created brand new for the game. It was being developed by Studio Underground Development, who at the time had only developed Guitar Hero Van Halen and the then cancelled Call of Duty Devil's Brigade. Now we have to talk about one of the most controversial Call of Duty cancelled games ever. And the reason why it was controversial is that there was actually a lawsuit. The game was intended to be a direct sequel to Call of Duty Finest Hour, which was the very first console installment of Call of Duty back in 2004. By mid-2006, the game had earned $45 million, so clearly it was a success and Activision wanted to hammer down on the sequel. Call of Duty Finest Hour was all part of a contract between Activision and Spark Unlimited, where they had to create three AAA quality products for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. With Finest Hour out of the way, the second and third would either be sequels to 
the finest hour or games based on a new IP. Total cost of the first game was pegged at $8.5 million, but things quickly got complicated as many of the experienced staff that the CEO wanted to bring on for the studio hadn't actually left their jobs at EA. And when EA learned that approximately 20 of its staff suddenly quit, their legal team went into action, filing a suit against Spark Unlimited. At one point, the chief technical officer left the company and a lawsuit soon followed, adding another $70,000 in legal fees to Activision's tab. After a ton of development struggles, they finally released Call of Duty Finest Hour near the end of 2004. The proposed sequel, Call of Duty Combined Forces, was not compelling to Activision, describing the game as more of an expansion pack rather than a wholly new experience. Spark Unlimited claimed that they could have the game ready in 12 months and required over $10.5 million in funding. Activision was unimpressed and felt that Spark had not fully resolved its organization issues. The company then demanded a half a million dollar cancellation fee from Activision, which they refused. And in July 2005, the studio took legal action against Activision, accusing them of breaching their publishing contract. Skip forward nearly 17 years later, the internet still isn't sure if this lawsuit between Spark and Activision remains unsolved. But I don't think any dev studio will have a mess as bad as this with Activision ever again. Now, it isn't just video games that Activision have cancelled for Call of Duty, as they were about to take the trading card game by storm with a Call of Duty real-time card game. This was set to be produced by Upper Deck Entertainment, a trading card company set to release in the fall of 2008, but it was cancelled before it even entered production. It was set to be a two-player game set on a 5x5 grid with an attempt to win through either earning a preset number of points won by kills or by other mission-based objectives like capture the flag. And these images are all that remain, so clearly they were trying really hard to try and capture what Call of Duty multiplayer would feel like, but in a real-time card game? Who knows, this could have been one of the biggest card games ever, but we'll never know.